So, in the last lecture, we discussed about the plastic moment carrying capacity of sections under combined loading. So, we discussed for the I section the combined axial loading under bending moment and axial force, let us say P n interaction. We said that M by M P plus n by n p square This is one kind of interaction diagram where the value of n by n p is lower than the capacity of the whip. Alternatively, is true interaction for n by n p greater than or equal to a w by a and we already saw that the interaction diagrams for m by m p versus n by n p at 1 and 1 for a w by a ratio becoming 0 this becomes a linear line then this keeps on varying for different ratios of this curve is for a w by a 0 and of course, this is for 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 and so on. and so on. So, the third kind of section which is commonly used in marine structures which we will complete today will be the box sections. Box sections look like this. When you want to really find out the interaction diagram for box sections as similar to that of I sections, this is considered as an equivalent I section as drawn here. You may wonder that how these two sections are equivalent. Let us try to work out the area of the section. So, the area of the section can be simply d square minus on the inner one which is 
d minus 2 t the whole square. We simplify d square minus. So I will get four t of one minus t. Is it okay? D minus t. Sorry, this is dt. This is dt. Yeah. D minus. Let us try to work out this area. So, the area in this case is going to be d t of 2 plus d minus 2 t of 2 t. So, 2 d t plus 2 d t minus 4 d square. So, 4 d t minus 4 t square, I can say 4 d minus t areas are same therefore, this section is considered to be equivalent of that of the box section. Once we have derived an equivalent I section, they can use this <coughs> interaction diagrams which has been given for the I section by the literature for finding out the plastic moment carrying capacity under the combination of bending and axial forces. Okay. Let us talk about the tube sections. The thickness of the tube is T and the diameter of the tube is D. And as I understand, we are talking about thin walled sections. What does it mean is T is much lower than D. It's a very slim tube. Okay. So let us consider a section at an angle of phi naught from here, and try to draw the stress distribution at that level. So under the combined action the stress distribution looks like this this is positive and negative sigma y p and sigma y p this is a combined action this can be split as two bending and axial force alone independently. So, we can say this is subjected to bending plus of course, this sigma y p sigma y p. this is bending alone this is axial load alone i call this as b c and this is of course the combined effect
now we can say the bending moment m is given by 4 sigma y p I will come to the point y it is 4 sigma y p I am looking for one quadrant 0 to 90. So, the variation is from 0 to phi naught that is what I am looking at d by 2 into t r into t d by 2 into t is my area of course d phi is that elemental strip thickness and the moment of that strip respect to cg will be d by 2 cos phi naught is it not though d by 2 cos phi naught will be from the center it should have been d by 2 minus t by 2 but I am neglecting t by 2 because t is very very small compared to d so it is d by 2 cos phi naught. So, if you integrate tell me what is m so sigma y p d square t sin phi naught let me call c equation number 1 ok. Now, the axial force or axial load n can vary 4 sigma y p phi naught to pi by 2 only one quadrant and the area is again d by 2 into t into d phi. If you integrate you get two sigma y p d t pi by two minus phi on this equation number 2. Now, we already know the maximum moment carrying capacity of the section m p is simply given by what is the equation? into z p and what is the z p value for a tubular section considering that t is very very less compared to d we already worked out the shape factor we can easily find out z p I can say this is d square t of sigma y p call equation number 3. and maximum axial load capacity n p is actually a into sigma y p which is pi d t sigma y call this equation number 4. I want to now draw the interaction diagram. So, using the above equations 1 to 4 I can rewrite these equations like this the interaction diagram now will become or I should say interaction equation not the diagram. I should say m by m p. Now, unfortunately, you will see that n has a variable of argument phi naught. So, we cannot directly write like this. So, m by m p 
minus the argument of the angle okay pi by 2 n by n because that is the variation we are talking about is it no pi by 2 is the maximum variation we have one quadrant and that should be equal to this the bm n interaction diagram for thin wall tubular sections Now we will talk about some of the concepts of impact analysis we are not going to go in detail talk about some of the important aspects which are all the factors which will affect the impact analysis and how to compute them approximately we are not going to do in detail now generally marine structures are highly prone to collision from ships they cause impact on the members it is essential therefore that marine structures should be checked for such impact loads what is the primary factor what is the primary factor that influences the impact analysis if if this question is asked the primary factor that influences the impact analysis is whether the analysis should be static or then now successively the question comes when the analysis will be considered static when it will be considered or should be considered dynamic when the duration of collision is greater than the natural period fundamental period of the structure i should say ms ms means marine structure then take it as a static analysis or else take it as a dynamic analysis so essentially one is interested to know 
how to compute the duration of collision what I call as T naught the duration of collision I can call T naught is of high importance because this decides whether the analysis is going to be static or quasi static or dynamic. Now, let us now see what are the other factors that influence the impact analysis. geometry of the platform geometry of the striking ship the motion of the ship with respect to the platform. Here I should say other factors, the primary factor is the duration of collision. These are some other factors which also influence the impact analysis when we talk about effect of collision on marine structures. Now, there are two types of ships ships that cause collision can be categorized into two groups, group 1 small ships that cause collision to the legs of the platform. that is one part of it. The second could be large vessels that cause impact to the deck of the platform. That is why we said the other factors that influence the analysis is geometry of the So, small ships essentially will cause collision to the legs and larger vessels essentially will cause impact to the deck that is the key word here. When you talk about impact of ships on offshore structures or on marine structures, there are two ways by which this impact can be caused. One is what we call as central impact, other is what we call as eccentric impact. Let us say a platform like this. These are all legs, this plan, this is my vessel,
this means CG of the vessel this becomes my velocity this is called central impact I will explain this. For eccentric impact you have a platform these are legs of the platform you have a vessel velocity is in a different direction it is called eccentric impact. Now central impact causes critical response or critical effect on the platform this kind of impact happens when the line of action passing through the CG of the ship and the contact point this kind of impact happens when the line of the action passing through CG of the ship and the contact point or the same line. In the case of eccentric impact some part of the kinetic energy will be retained as rotational energy for the ship because once the ship collides it keeps on rotating ok. So, that energy some part of the energy of this kinetic energy of the ship is retained for rotating this vessel ok. So, in eccentric impact full impact load or the full impact energy of the vessel is not transferred to the platform whereas, in case of central or critical impact full energy is transferred to the platform ok. Now, the question comes what are those energy content present in such impact analysis we will talk about that. and this is required after impact ok, this is absorbed by the ship after impact. Now, let us say energy absorption of 
of the central impact. The conservation of energy requires transfer of kinetic energy of the ship before impact to elastic deformation energy. and plastic dissipation of energy the kinetic energy of the vessel should be now transferred into these two components in the ship and the platform I can write a simple equation saying E kinetic energy should be now be the sum of E s plus E p plus E f equation number 1, where E is the kinetic energy of the ship before impact E s is the energy absorbed by the ship E p is the energy absorbed by the platform and E f is the energy absorbed by the fenders. platforms will have fenders all around, so that to prevent or to protect the structure. You understand what are fenders, fenders are nothing but shock absorbers which are kept on the side of the surface of the platforms in the periphery. Generally they are placed at equal intervals along the jetties, okay. even offshore platforms will also have fenders along the periphery, so that the structure or the platform is not damaged by the impact caused by the vessels or ships. So, Fenders will also absorb energy, nothing but they are actually energy absorbing elements. Okay. Remove this. So, we know that the kinetic energy before collision is given by half m v naught square. where m in this case is mass of the ship and added mass and v is what we call a striking velocity. Some literature call this as impact velocity. There have been experimental studies conducted by people in the research and they have shown that what would be the component of energy absorbed by the ship 
energy absorbed by the platform and fenders by conducting a load deformation diagram. So, I am going to draw the diagram for you this is deformation and this is load. This is what we call as effect of the platform. Area under this curve with respect to x axis will give you the energy absorbed by the platform, that is a proportion, schematic proportion. The next is the fender this is fenders and area under this curve will give you the energy absorbed by the fenders experimentally. And third one is the ship. And of course, energy absorbed by this will be given by the curve. Probably you can slightly reduce this. This is very close, very close, and goes like this. These are the experimental investigations. shown in the literature indicating the proportion of E p, E f and E s. Okay. This is my given load p. P is the given. If you look at the impact analysis. we should say study of impact model. This can be simplified in two ways. The collision study what <coughs> people conduct consists of two parts. One, calculating the loss of kinetic energy during collision calculating the dissipation of energy in the ship and the plant. Let us say we have a very simplified analysis to find out the impact caused by the vessel on a platform. Say so, this is my platform
jacket platform and I have a vessel the vessel has a CG and I will call this as S, this means CG I will idealize this as spring stiffness which is K S, S stands for ship, K is the stiffness and similarly for the platform I have K P. Let us say at the point of impact I call this as R S and this as R P, P stands for the platform and S stands for the ship and this is the mass of the ship I call this as M and this is my striking velocity which is V naught which is moving forward and hitting the platform. let m be the mass of the ship k s k f be the idealized spring stiffness of the and the platform respectively R S and R P be the deformation of two springs S denotes displacement of the ship from its C G position and of course, V naught is the striking velocity or the impact velocity. This is just before impact not after impact, after impact the velocity will be different. So, looking into this algorithm we will discuss in the next lecture how I can simply modif model this impact analysis and find out the collision period or the collision time and compare the time with the natural period of a rigid structure like a jacket structure and then say whether the impact analysis is going to remain static or dynamic. Okay we will discuss that in the next lecture. So, any doubt as on now. So, in this lecture to summarize we started with the P m interaction behavior of I sections where n by n p is lesser than the web capacity is more than the web capacity. Then we discussed about the plastic capacity of sections which are box sections which are considered as equivalent I sections in the literature on with respect to its area of equivalency which we showed here how to get the web thickness as 2 t when the flanges are t 
whereas the breadth and depth of the overall section is remaining same. Then of course, we also derived expressions of the interaction diagram for the circular tubes that is tube sections of thin walled sections. We showed you how the interaction diagram can be plotted for a thin walled tube sections. We started discussing the fundamentals of impact analysis. We understood that for marine structures impact or collision cost by vessels are important because they are unavoidable, but it depends on essentially what is the time of collision or duration of collision. If that time is much larger than the fundamental time period of the system, you may not have to bother as a dynamic analysis, you can consider this as a quasi static or static analysis and do the analysis. If it is very short, then we must consider the vibration effects, secondary vibrations caused by the impact on the platform, which we do a dynamic analysis for the platform or the structure. Apart from that other factors also are there which influence the impact analysis is the geometry of the ship, geometry of the platform, the striking velocity and we have two kinds of impacts caused on the vessels by the caused on the platforms by the vessels central impact or critical impact and the eccentric impact depending upon how the vessel is positioned with respect to the striking point in the platform. Okay. Then essentially one looks at in collision analysis or collision impact analysis one looks at what is the computation of kinetic energy lost by the ship or what is the energy dissipation happening in the ship and the platform. So, we have shown you experimental results available in the literature how the total kinetic energy which is available to the ship before impact is distributed by the law of conservation in terms of three concepts of energy taken by the ship, energy by the absorbed by the platform and energy absorbed by the fenders in its proportion. So, now we are interested in working out an example and show that what would be the collision time T naught for this specific example by using a simplified impact analysis which we will discuss in the next lecture. Okay, thanks.